Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video of the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series, Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti is gonna show you how you can do straight line quilting to quilt your quilt on your home machine. Welcome back. Okay, we had so much fun doing the basting, now it's time to talk about straight line quilting. What we have here is our quilt and a couple of supplies that we're gonna use, our tape, some bobbin genies, and I'll tell you more about those later, the super slider, some gloves, the clips for the quilt, and the walking foot. Okay, so now we're getting ready to have some fun. It's time to sew. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna talk about the machine a little bit and talk about some of the things that I recommend before you actually dive into the quilt that you've just prepared. So I suggest that you do some testing on your quilt first, and you're gonna need to change your foot out and do some other things so that you're prepared. This machine that we're using today is an Eversewn Sparrow QE. It's a quilter's edition. And we are using that today because it is intended for quilting. It's got a larger throat space and it also has some additional lighting underneath. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna change the foot. And when I say foot, I mean down here. So this is a walking foot. I'm gonna use that for straight line quilting. However, you don't have to use a walking foot. In order to do that for this machine, all machines are slightly different. So you might wanna check your manual. But for this particular machine, we want to remove the standard foot that's on there. And then we're gonna add, okay, so we're gonna add the walking foot and there's two components. We just wanna get the screw in there. And I usually just finger press, or fingers tighten it rather, because it is a little bit awkward. And once you get it in there, then you can use your screwdriver because you want to make sure that it is very tight. You do not want the foot to be loose. Okay, we got it in there. All right, so now we have our walking foot on and you do not have to use the walking foot. You can just use your regular foot that comes with your machine. We are going to use two different colored threads and that's easier so that you can check your tension because you can see the, see the differences on both sides. And so when I say tension, I basically mean the balance between your top thread and your bottom thread. You want them to connect together and you don't want too much on the top or too much on the bottom. And so that's the reason why we're gonna do some testing in the beginning is to make sure that that tension looks good before you start on your machine. Mm -hmm. So now we've stitched out a couple of examples of some tension. This is good balance tension over here on the right and these on the other side over here are not quite so balanced. And you can turn it over and you can see that we can see the dark color on the other side and we don't want that. So we wanna be able to just balance it like this. Okay, and the Fat Quarter Shop made this awesome diagram and this is very helpful. I have used a diagram like this for many years and when you get frustrated with tension, you want to be able to look at something. And so this explains tension in a way that you can understand the balance tension. If your top tension is too tight, that means you wanna lower the thread tension dial. And your thread tension on your machine is going to be different. All machines are slightly different, but you want to start in the middle of your dial and move to the right or to the left. This also shows this not being correct where your top tension is too loose. We want to increase the thread tension dial. So that's just kind of a diagram showing you that. Thread tension can affect the way that it looks on your quilt sandwich. And so you, there's a lot of components that are involved when you're trying to figure out tension. It's not just the dial. You wanna make sure that your bobbin is wound correctly. You wanna make sure you have a good fresh needle. You wanna make sure you're using good quality thread. All those are come into play when you're talking about tension. And since you just spent so much time on this quilt, you want it to look beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna do our stitch and check. We're using a 2.5 stitch length. That's a great length for quilting, for straight line quilting. I'm gonna cut the thread 
and we just want to take a look at it and make sure that it looks good on both sides and it does okay and if this is your tr your first quilt and you are a true beginner I would suggest that you do some playing around with the sample and make sure that you feel good with it make sure you feel comfortable lower your shoulders kind of relax make sure you have some fun with it because you don't want to work all that time on your quilt and then have any issues so make sure you practice first before you start on it Okay, I'm so excited, it's time. All right, we are going to start marking our quilt so that we can sew. And so the Fat Quarter Shop created an awesome a diagram that will kind of help you. What we're gonna do with our tape is we're gonna go from one corner to the other on both sides so that we create a cross hatch. And so this is a downloadable PDF um, down below and we're just gonna get started. So we're gonna put our tape over on the corner and what we're gonna do is once we get our tape down, I will show you, we'll kind of get it straightened, but what we're going to do is we're going to first just put it down. And I'm going to move these things up just a little bit. And so we're going to be able to follow our connecting lines where the sashing connects to the blocks so that you can kind of go down, right down the center. And that will give you a good straight line. The first line, we want to try to make it as straight as you can. And then as you go along, if things get a little wonky, it's, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna do one piece. Okay, so once we get our first line here, we are going to measure the four inches. So we're gonna stitch on this side of the line, and then we're gonna put our ruler, we're gonna line up the four onto the side of the tape, and then we know this is gonna be four inches. So we're gonna put a piece of tape here. And so we're gonna sew on this side of the tape for here, and we're gonna sew over here on this next line we're gonna sew on the opposite side of the tape so that we can keep the four inches. So we're gonna sew on this side for the first one and then on this side of the tape for the second one. And then we just keep moving our ruler so that we stay with the four inches. All right, move it down just a little more and make sure that your end it's okay. All right. And this tape is really great because it sticks really well just for a couple of minutes and then when you're ready to take it off, it comes right off. You can also use these as you continue on or you can use more tape, um, but sometimes I do reuse them. Okay, so we have our machine in place and we are going to get sewing here. So I have some quilt clips. I'm going to, these are, they're really great for when you have a large quilt. Um, this one's not as big, so it's not as necessary, but it does kind of help keep the bulk of your, your quilt um, rolled up. And that part's gonna go in here. So it does kind of keep it from moving around. I'm just gonna use two. And then I also use the uh, machine gloves and I cut, the thumb and the first finger, index finger off. Because I like to be able to have my finger and my thumb, so if I have some trouble and I need to rethread my needle or I need to, you know, pop onto social media or whatever, that way you've got your two fingers and that helps uh, to be able to just use your, use your fingers and that still doesn't take away from the fact that you use these gloves so that you have some, um, just so that it keeps the um just the traction i guess just so that you can your hands don't slide around as much okay so like we talked about before we're going to go on this side of the line and i have an ironing board over here to the left of me at home i have always used an ironing board it kind of keeps the bulk of the quilt off the floor and you don't have to use as much of your arm strength to keep it up or some people throw it over their shoulders but I'm gonna use the uh, ironing board and we're just gonna slide the quilt through. And there's a lot of maneuvering. So you just have to kind of be patient and we're gonna line up. Okay, so we're gonna line up our, our needle with the side of our tape. And if you do happen to drive over your tape, it's not that big of a deal, it will come off. So just try to follow, like I said, the first line is the most important, so just try to keep that one nice and straight. We're gonna use a 2.5 stitch length. And you might want to go a little slower in the beginning just to kinda get familiarized. 
And it's also, you kind of have to go slow because you have to continuously readjust and move the quilt. You also, while you're doing this, want to take a look. Even though we checked our tension before, you still want to pop over and make sure that the back still looks okay. Make sure that the front still looks okay. And you also want to keep in mind any kind of bunching that may happen. Sometimes that does happen when you're using your home machine. If you're not paying as much attention to the bottom, it can bunch. So you want to look over there and, and see. And I'm, I'll go ahead and talk about it now. That's one of the reasons why I do not baste the edge of all four sides of the quilt when I'm doing straight line quilting. Sometimes as we're doing our blocks, they may become a little bit wonky and not totally square. It happens to all of us. And so when that happens and you put all those blocks together, sometimes there's a little bit of puffiness and there's some excess fabric since it doesn't lay entirely flat. And then when you're pushing this, it tends to kind of push your edges. And if you've already put a, put a basting stitch on the edge, then it can kind of push that and you can create a little pucker for yourself. So when I do straight line quilting, I don't usually um, do any kind of basting around the edge. For free motion I do, but not for a straight line. But you can do whatever you feel makes you feel more comfortable. Okay, just keep adjusting. And the farther out, this first row tends to be the most difficult because you have the most bulk on both sides. As you move over to one side, it becomes a lot easier because there's not as much fabric to hold. This is another reason why I like to cut a couple of fingers off because you can feel a little bit better when you put your hand on the bottom. You can make sure that there's not any puckers and you can kind of feel it because the gloves you don't feel as much so that's one of the reasons why I like to cut a couple fingers off. I do try, even though my tape is not exactly on the point there, I do try to stay with the point just because that is, and my tape may not have been perfect. And I do usually drive over the edge just to, just, just to make sure. Cut our thread. And since we did both pieces of tape at the same time, you can just pull it right back through. Get yourself situated on your ironing board again. And if you remember, we're gonna stitch on this side of the tape this time, because that is our four inches. I'm gonna grab my thread. Sometimes the thread gets really short. You wanna pull it out, tuck it back underneath the foot, and then start. If you start with a really short piece of thread, it will uh, probably get sucked in and then you'll have to re-thread. Just keep adjusting. Oops, I ran over the tape. Like I said, it's okay. As you get a little more familiar, you can go a little faster, and as you get to the edge, you can also go a little faster.
All right, we did it. Okay, and so I would just continue to go on to the, the edge of the quilt until you run out, and then we're gonna go the other direction. Okay, so now we're going in the other direction. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start on our corner. And we're just gonna make sure that we try to hit those corners because we're gonna be stitching on this side of the blue line. And I'm gonna adjust. doesn't need to be there anymore. Go to the other corner. All right. Now we're ready to go back and do our other line. Okay, so we're gonna line up, same thing that we did on the other side. And we're gonna line it up. And we're gonna stitch on the opposite side of the tape for this row. Keep going and you're going to do this for the whole quilt. There are many different kinds of marking tools if you prefer. I just like the tape. And if you have the space or you're doing it on the floor and you want to go ahead and continue with your tape all the way across and then go to the machine, you can certainly do that. And if you would like to use uh, marking tools, there's many different kinds on the market. You certainly can. I like to use tape, but there are lots of them out there. Okay, so we are going to go the other direction now. Same rules apply. We're just going to follow the, the blue tape. We're going to be on this side of the tape. to get it adjusted. <clears throat> okay. Make sure you don't forget to check on the bottom side from time to time. I'm kind of at a weird angle here. There we go. So we are going four inches between lines. You can certainly go less. You can even use the space on your foot. Um, I just recently did one that I just went the, the distance um, right here. So you did a little stitch and then you just follow the left side of your foot again if you want them really close together. So there's lots of options as far as straight line. You can make them far apart, close together, whatever you like. Okay, we're ready to cut our thread. Pull it right back. I 
take that guy off. Okay, this time we're gonna sew on this side of the line. I guess I also want to say that, so we're doing four inches right now, and let's say you get the whole thing done and then you wish that you would have done only two inches, and you can do that. You can just put some more tape in between each row and go right back through the whole thing again. So if you, if you decide after you're finished you want it a little tighter, you can, add, you can do that at any time. And so I do also want to mention that sometimes when you're when you're running this way and you're going to run into an, another uh, steam a seam that you've just stitched, there can sometimes be some fullness, and you want to just make sure you kind of pull it as you can because it can make a little pucker. So if you can, when you get to the get to the end, sometimes it does that. If you just kind of pull up just a little bit, it should help out. I'm gonna keep going and I'll see you when I'm finished. Okay, we're all done with our straight line quilting. And that was so much fun, isn't it? It looks really pretty. We did this one, we did four inches. I'm just gonna kind of recap. So we did four inches between each line going this direction as well as the other direction. And if you wanted to make yours smaller, you certainly could. You could do the same thing that we just did with the tape and you can put it in between and make them two inches or you can use your walking foot or whatever foot's on your machine and you can just follow the, the distance of your foot and then that would make them very close together. So you can certainly do that. I do also want to mention after I got done with the straight line, I went through and I added a basting stitch just with my regular machine and just with the regular foot or you can use the walking foot and I just did a larger stitch length. I kept it really close to the edge and that's going to be useful when Kimberly shows you in one of the next videos how to attach your binding because you'll trim it and you'll then attach your binding. So it's good to tack it down all the way around. So thank you very much for joining me and I had so much fun. Please check out my next video on free motion quilting. <laughs>